Ladies and gentlemen, Dazzy D, a.k.a. Big Sax. Take me back to uh, to hanging out with Dre back at that time. What do you remember about the, the whole Ice Cube and NWA split? Tell me about the story where you and Pac apparently did some writing together during the L.A. riots. Oh, I called him. Like, bro, this boy's down out right here. He was like, man, fuck the studio, come get me. You just see it in his eyes how much he loved the revolution. And they would stop him, like, wait, man, you Pac. You Pac. What's up, Pac? <laughs> wow. He was sitting there like, and he was sitting there like, man, like, like all pushing the side, homie. He was looking at, at, at Cat Dead in their eyes and like, hey, fuck all that shit tonight, man. Why? Tell me about the story um, about you supposed to be being on Ice Cube's America's Most Wanted and why you weren't on that album. I was, I was fucked up, man. Give us an idea of what uh, growing up in L.A. was like back then, especially your experience. Oh, man, it was, it was off the chain. You know, just, I mean, you know, everything everything was still kind of new. You know, hip-hop, even gangbanging. You know, gangbanging really kind of took off maybe like in the 70s. So by maybe the early 80s, you know, it was still kind of, you know, still kind of new as far as uh, hoods and stuff went in L.A. Everything was still kind of forming. But uh, it was crazy, man. You know, I mean, I learned a lot. Uh, I, I started game bank when I was 12. I got put on when I was 12. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it, man. The L.A., South Central, yeah. you know what I'm saying, over the hundreds, out the world over the hundreds, you know. And that was the, un uh, is it Underground Crip? Yeah, Underground Block Crip 07. Okay, okay. Give us um, give us an idea of what it was like at 12 getting jumped into the gang. Oh, man, we just started off with homies. You know, we, man, we was going, we was playing Little League football, Little League baseball together. So we were just friends, man. It just, you know, it got just one thing led to another. Did you ever think in your wildest imagination that hip hop would, I mean, not hip, not hip hop, but um, did you ever think in your wildest imagination that that gangs, Crips and Blood specifically, would spread all over the world and they're literally gang banging in the Philippines right now? Nah, not really, bro. Not really. You know, it's actually, it actually when it, when it started uh, going that route, it was hard for us to accept it, man, because we were sitting here like, wow, like, really? <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's a trip, man. Um, yeah. Give me an idea of what you remember when, and, and I want to chat about your career, but I kind of want to get to get to know you first and, and let the audience get to know you. But um, give us an idea of what you remember when crack hit the streets. Oh man, it was terrible. It was terrible, and it's crazy too because it, 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 it felt like it just it just it just started overnight, man. You know, uh, it happened real fast, like like. You know, a couple years, like, it, it went from, you know, oh, this is a new drug, try it out, to, you know, just the whole damn city just getting cracked out. Crime on the rise. Yeah, you know, that, that came a little later, you know what I'm saying? Cause at first, you know, you got to get addicted first before, you know, you got to get addicted. You go from having, you know, having money to get addicted to... To, to, to using drugs to, to now, you know, either no longer have the money, so now you gotta you gotta still kill for it, or you selling it, and you're making money, and now you you don't want to lose out on any money by competition, so now you beefing in war, have drug wars, so yeah, all, all that man, just you know, it just, but it still felt like it just all happened overnight. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard that before. I had Freeway Rick Ross on, and as you know, he was one of the, if not the guy who made that happen and it was an overnight thing man it was an overnight thing and that shit caught on like a motherfucker crazy man yeah. i mean like seriously bro like i'm talking about you know like you know just imagine just just imagine like you know for weed heads you know what i'm saying if, if a new weed strain come out that's fire and just all of a sudden everybody can like oh you tried this new you know you tried this new endo you tried this new chronic you tried this new whatever you know, it's shit. That's how that's how crack was. But you know, nobody knew the fallout from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, damn, what a um, fallout it was. Like you know, yeah, you know, because you figure, man, you know, our relatives before 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 the crack epidemic was what hair rod and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, PCP. And PCP. 
see shit. So you know, you figured they they had to figure, okay, if we could, if we could deal with that type of shit, and we just smoking bomb and fluid and shit, you know, this little crack <laughs> ain't shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey man, hey, but nobody knew, bro. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Now, um, let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, what got you into rapping? Oh man, love, just the love of hip hop, man. My cousin Coochie D, rest in peace, man. He had a record, uh, he had a record player, man. My him and my well, my auntie, they had a record player, and uh, they had they had that uh, Super Rhymes, they had that that record called Super Rhymes, and uh, man, I just used to play that record, man. Like every time I would go over there, I would play that record, man, about maybe twenty, thirty times, back to back to back to back, man. And, just fell in love with hip-hop, man. One of my biggest crushes growing up as a kid. To this day, she still looks fly as hell. Uh, but Yo-Yo, you started working with Yo-Yo, right? Yeah, well, actually, I, uh, the first song I ever wrote was uh, for JJ Fat. Was that the diss to uh, Salt and Pepper? Yeah, that oh, was the diss record. Take me back to that time, please. <laughs> oh, I, have to know, I have to know the story, why, why they even decided to diss him and all that. Because it, it because they was they was dispersed, you know, because Roxanne, Shante and, and and all them they dis they dissed them first, you know, just 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 because uh well, they, you know man, they dissed JJ Fad? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they was dissed them so you know, they just had they had to come with a record, man. They had they had to come with a record. And it was crazy because the only reason I was only reason I was able to write it because uh Dre, Dre had to get a beat. Uh, Dre had started working on a beat for me. And uh, that was his way of going, okay, you know what? Uh, write this song for J.J. Fad and we'll, uh, and I, I'll give you this beat, which was, uh, you better think, that was on my, my very first single. That, that was, you know, that was the pay for that. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So you wrote that for J.J. Fad. Did they even ever get any, like, backlash or did they get into any real beef with Salt and Pepper or was it just kind of a throwaway thing nah, uh, I think I think I think once Paul, Salt and Pepper heard, heard the record I think that that cause you know it was just the fact that you know all, uh, Super Sonic and all that shit you know man that wasn't really considered hip hop you know what I'm saying so, especially for the East Coast so uh, okay. when we came to this record you know what I'm saying that kind of showed them like okay damn they, they, they do know hip hop you know and I, and it kind of it kind of died down after that yeah take me back to uh, to hanging out with Dre back at that time and, and how you guys' relationship came about uh, uh, with Jinx, you know, him and Dre are first cousins. So, uh, you know, just being best friends with Jinx, man, just, uh, it basically damn near felt like we was living together under one roof, under, uh, you know, under uh, uh, Jinx roof, man. We was just there, all there, all there together, 24 hours a day. We was doing, uh, the rodeo mixtape shit, and, uh, we was working on my shit, we was working on CIA shit at the same time. We was working, bro. Yeah, shout out to Rhodium. We had Tony A on a few weeks ago, and man, I can't wait for his yeah. documentary to come out. Yeah, that's my bro, man. He was my DJ. He actually, he was my DJ for the for the first record. He Tony was, A was. Uh, yeah. Haha, <laughs> no yeah. shit. Small world. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. All tied in, man. We all tied in together, bro. Dope, dope. I love that shit. I'm a hip hop nerd, so I love hearing shit like this, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, now your first album was Turn It Loose um, And that was produced by Dre and Sir Jinx um, Take me back to that time Oh that was just fun man Like I said we was See we were We were Me and Jinx We were the young The young guns You know what I'm saying Like we were basically, basically Think of us like We was like young money mm. You know what I'm saying Like where Dre and was considered Cash money mm -hmm. We was considered young money. So, you know, we was like, well, I dreaded it was, you know, 19, 17, 18, 19, 20. Man, me and Jesus was like 14, 15 years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we was young. So, you know, we we, we was all from the beginning. Like, you know, when Drayden was going through their record crew phase and supersonic and all that old, you know, all that old fast, crazy shit. Like, me and Jesus was like on some real hip hop shit so we couldn't really understand what they were doing. Mm. So when it was time for draining them to like, you know, okay, you know, let's really kinda, you know, get get to this hip hop shit, this rap shit, you know, they kinda they kinda linked on us for that. Mm. Okay. What you do you know what I'm saying? And that we used to watch 
you know what I'm saying, us, me, because it was a crew of us. It was like just young guns, man, me, my bro Dismo, uh, Dale the Funker, Home Sapien. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, yeah, we was just, we was like, like the real spitters. Like, we was sitting there like, oh, man, we rap, all, all that old weird shit, you know, we kind of cool, we rap. <laughs> What do you remember about the the whole Ice Cube and NWA split? The whole what? The whole Ice when when Ice Cube ended up splitting from NWA. Were you around that time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. What do you remember? Um. Well, you know, the movie basically kind of broke it down. Um, it was just all about money, man. With, them, with you know, with them and um, and Q just Q just felt like he was getting shorthanded, man. And, 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 and he gave them all to me. And uh, at first, his, 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 his uh, what, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? His threats was, 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 you know, it was working. But then, you know, uh, Dre and Yeezy and them, they, they turned to ring. They was like, you know what? You know, that's too dope, but you're just as dope. So if you stay, you write all the shit, you get all the money. And that's why Ren ended up staying, because they were both supposed to use it. Ah. And, uh, yeah. So, but they talked Ren into staying, and that's what, that's what, they, that's what, it, you know, she walked away. Mm. Okay, okay. Now, speaking of the movie, <laughs> Straight Outta Compton, which is what he's talking about, um, there was a scene in it where Ice Cube's crew runs into the Ruthless crew, I think it was at a mall or something like that, and then they ended up scrapping. Was that? Yeah, it was, we, we was at the, uh, we was at the, uh, music, we was at a music convention in New York. We oh, okay. Were you there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. T tell me about that. Ah, oh, that shit was crazy, man. I mean, we knew they was there. They knew we was there. But we didn't get to see them until we was actually, we was on the elevator. We was on the escalator. And they was going down. We was going up. And we was like, we saw each other. We was like, you know where to go? Man, in the bathroom, man. We handled our business. Scrapped it out in the bathroom. Huh? In the bathroom, you guys fought. Yeah. yeah. Oh damn! No yeah. shit. Okay, so because because Hollywood tries to embellish it a little bit, it looked like you guys were coming up an elevator, they were going down or something like that, and it started right there. Yeah. Okay. Nah, it, was a, it, was a, it was the escalator. Okay. It was crazy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Hey, so how many guys total would you say? Because before that, because really what happened was before that, uh, they had jumped. You. They had jumped you, they had, uh, we had get, we had get the, uh, the Fresh Fest out here. And, uh, they had jumped you at the Fresh Fest. Oh. No yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, they got a hold of him first. That's, that's how, that's why it went down. This was kind yeah. of retaliation. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Okay, okay. So it was above the law included in that whole situation? Yeah, it was really there. It okay. Was just there. Okay. It was just, it was just ah. there. Yeah. It was like, you know, like you guys, you just got, you got to think of it, bro. Like, you know, like young guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, like NWA uh, uh, above the law was NWA young guns. Lynch Mob was huge young guns. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it had to go down that way. Mm, mm, mm. Um, tell me about the story where you and Pac apparently did some writing together during the LA riots. Yeah, yeah, same thing, bro. Same exact thing. Lynch my IQ, Lynch my Digital Underground Tupac. You know what I'm saying? So it was like it was like you know, Digital Underground and Q was already cracking at the time. So it was basically so when we went on the road, it was like okay, Q was like okay, these these, these is my young homies. These were not young like like your kids, but yeah. these are my homies that should come up under me. And Digital Underground was like, well, these this is my homie that's going to come up under us. Pac. So that's how the Pac joined the forces. You know, so we was we was considered the young guns of of, of, of that time, of that era. Even even after Lynch Mob, you know what I'm saying, I was considered that young gun. So me and Pac just formed a we just formed a relationship, bro. Like we used to do shit like man, we used to do shit, man, where I wish I could create a movie so people could understand like Pac was a spitter, homie. Like Pac like Pac would make great songs. But if you if you if, if you really wanted to know Pac and really trip off what Pac was at, his head was at, he was a spitter, bro. Like he 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 wrapped his ass off. Like that's what he did. But he understood the business, so he he, he, he dumbed it down to write songs. But man, we would do shit like this, bro. Like like Pac would come from 
from the bay, and he would come with like maybe a whole fucking cassette tape, bro. I bullshit you not on everything I love on my mom's rest in peace. He would come with a cassette tape, bro, with like seven or eight digital underground beats that you know that was made by them for him. <laughs> and then I would come with a cassette, bro, like the Jinx beats. You know what I'm saying? And we would just press play on each other and just rap our ass off. It's like friendly battles, bro. Oh. Like we would just rap our ass off for hours, homie. Man, I wish you guys would have recorded that somehow. Ah. That kills man, me. I wish I wish I would have too, um, yeah, I really do, man. And uh so that's how we got close, you know what I'm saying? And then uh the the the, the, the night of the wires, what happened was he was in he was in the studio. He was in Glendale at the studio and I was in LA, I was getting crashed. So I called him and we was like, Bro, this boy's down out here. He was like, Man, fuck the studio, come get me. <laughs> uh so we go we go way the fuck out there to Glendale, man. Uh I don't you know, I don't know how many cats or not from L.A. that listen to your show, but, you know, we drove about 45 minutes away from L.A., out of L.A., man, when he got him, and uh, came back, man, and it was just, it was crazy, man. He loved it, man. And you could, it was crazy, too, because you could just see it in his eyes how much he loved the revolution, bro. Like, it was some other shit. Like, he really, like, he really dug that shit, man. Like, he, like, you know, we was, we was, we was happy stealing shit. You know what I'm saying? We was happy breaking in, stealing shit. You know, being young, 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 young dudes. You know what I'm saying? But he embraced it for what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a revolution, and yeah. he embraced it for that. And that night, man, motherfuckers was like, you know, busy doing what they was doing, trying to break into stores and shit. And they were stopping, like, wait, right, man, you Bach, you Bach, what's up, Bach? <laughs> wow. He was sitting there like, and he was sitting there, there like, man, like. Like all bush inside, homie. He would look at at that at, at cat dead in their eyes and like, hey, fuck all that shit tonight, man. Why? Wow, dude, that fucking make that gave me chills, dog. Yeah, homie. Wow. That's crazy. So what'd you end up getting? Man, I uh <laughs> it's crazy. I got a story about that too, homie. I got stories, man. Please, uh, no, I, please. Crazy, we got back yeah, it's, it's crazy when we got back to the hood, homie. I uh 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 my mom cussing was fussing, she was cussing at us, rest in peace, my mom, she was like, you know, y'all motherfuckers gonna get killed out here robbing and stealing, stealing shit, and, and Pac had a big ass bottle of Tide, homie, and he gave it to my mom, and my mom stopped all that, she stopped all that fussing and shit, homie, like, oh, thank you, baby, we was like, oh, you want some bullshit, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that tide is that a good shit? Oh, that's so yeah, funny. Yeah, you feel me? Like, come on, man. Wow. So, you know, we had a ball that night, man. It was, it was, it was, it was some other shit, man. It was, ah. it was deep. See, man. Yeah, we went, ah. up, we went picked up G Rap the next night. Uh, cool. the following night, Cool G Rap. G Rap. Yeah, oh. we had a ball. Yeah. Speaking of Pac, and this is unfortunately what ended his life, was the media-created East versus West Coast war. Um, what do you remember about that time? Oh, uh, man. Um, it was, that was crazy, too, man. I, um, I, mean, I understood it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understood it. But I, 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 you know, I mean, if you listen to my records, man, you know, I was always about L.A. Like, like. You know, on you better think. You know what I'm saying, man. That was like what four years before the actual West Coast beat. One of the one of the lines in the songs. Next time you try to diss LA, you better think. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 you know, I always rep the West, homie. I always knew LA. I always knew that it was kitchen with LA and and and, and the East Coast. I always knew. This. So I understood. It. You know what I'm saying? Like when it actually started going down, I understood it. I just, I just, um, I just hate that it had to go that far. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate it, bro. I hate that it, it went that far. Cause it's funny because uh, a lot of motherfuckers, man, like the rappers, they played it with the hype, homie. But it wasn't really that bad for rappers. Like, you know, um, Big was cool. Like, you know, what I'm saying we had rest in peace. You know, I went to New York. I hung out with Big and shit. Really? Like during the actual, yeah, during the actual funk. Like when it was like motherfuckers not allowed out here. Or, you know, motherfuckers can't come to the east or, you know, when it was like that, when it was that thick, you know, we were still traveling and shit. We was like, man, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. So you were posted and with, you were posted with Big. That bad. Damn. Yeah, it wasn't that bad with the rappers on It was just when the streets cat got, 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 mm. <laughs> it got stupid, though. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. 
Dude, what was Biggie yeah. like? What was Biggie like? Rest in peace, top five in my opinion. What was Biggie like? Biggie was cool as a motherfucker, man. Biggie was cool, homie. He 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 was he was on some other shit. Like he was on Big was on some fly shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Big was on some old you know, Big 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 was Big was the dark skinned version of a heavy D, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like Big was for the ladies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he could spit that grimy street shit, but by the end of the day, Biggie, Biggie was into the bars, man, and, you know, he was just a cool-ass cat. You know, he was one of them kind of cats where, you know, you know, you you, you got some weed or you got some drinks, you got some pretty bitches, he there, homie. He, you know what I'm saying? He there. He ain't tripping off nothing else. He there. And that and that's that's actually kind of what fucked him up, man, because when, um, he, he, he really did See, this is another thing, homie, and people don't, people don't remember this moment. He, he didn't Puff came to me, uh, to LA first. Puff came to LA first, and Puff did an interview. And Puff and and, and Puff didn't have no problems out. So when Puff, so when Big was like, "Yo, you know," Puff was like, "Come to LA." And Big was like, "Yo, you sure?" Like, you know, what I'm saying? it's all good. And and Puff was like, "Yeah, trust me, it's all good. They not tripping. Mm. Come out." You know what I'm saying? So, but by the end, they was tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that. By the end, the street cats got a hold up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can't, you can't be in the industry and only fuck the industry cats and think shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? Which was, which was puffy kind of mo. Puffy kind of dealt with a lot of record executives, and shit like that, man. So he wasn't really, you know, he wasn't really in tune with the streets. So for him to say, yeah, come to LA, it's cool. Ah, it wasn't really cool. Nah. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, my they got him, man. The streets, mm. the streets got him. You know mm. what I'm saying? So this is crazy, man. <clears throat> yeah, fucked up time in hip hop, man. I was there and I cried like a little girl. I ain't gonna lie, man. Both times when Pop yeah. and him passed. It was crazy. Uh, it was crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah. Pop, him, and Pop, and how all that shit happened. It's just crazy. Ridiculous. Man. And, and, and the fucked up part about it is, man, they, they just don't even understand, bro, how much, how much heart. They took away from hip hop, man. Mm -hmm. Taking them two dudes, they they took a lot of the heart and soul of hip hop away, man. I mean, cats couldn't. It took years for cats to kind of feel them boys like Nas and and and, and Snoop and you know what yeah. I'm saying and Jason. It took years for the motherfuckers to feel them boys, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Tell me about the story um, about you supposed to be being on Ice Cube's America's Most Wanted and why you weren't on that album. I was, I was fucked up, man. I was fucked up. I, uh, what happened was I, I, uh, I went out, of, I went out of town to, you know, hustle. I went out of town, man. My homes, uh, my home hit me one day, man. It was like, man, it's going down out here in, uh, in Seattle. It's going down. It's crack. Uh, come on. And, and instead of just kind of hanging out and going, you know, uh, you know, because Q, by the end, Q, they already got his budget for America's most, so, you know, he was kind of good financially, you know, and we was just, right at, at that moment in time, we was just the old, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we was the lynch mob, but, you know, nobody had heard of us yet, you know, we was just, we was just in the, actually in the, in the interstasis of, of, of being, being that, that cool. So I said, fuck, let me go get my money. Q got his money, let me go get mine. And I went out of town, and, uh, when I went out of town, man, they shot to New York, and then we kind of got back to L.A. the same time, bro, um, and I've never told the story to nobody. Um, I remember when Q pressed play on me, man, we, we got back, he got back, and he's like, come to the house, I want you to get a record. I was like, all right, cool. So I went to the house, he pressed play on me, and he walked out the room, he was like, man, just listen to it and let me know what you think, tell me what you think, man. I listened to that motherfucker from start to finish, bro. And when he came back, I was actually crying, dude. I was actually tears was coming out of my heart. Wow. I was like, damn, what's wrong? Right? I was like, bro, you, you don't understand what you just made. Mm. You, you don't get what you just made, huh? You just made a fucking mess. Did he feel that way or was he like still a little bit just like, does it sound good? I'm unsure of himself. Yeah, he, he wasn't he wasn't not sure of himself because he just didn't know because it was a new direction mm -hmm. for him. Is that you know, when he, he did the whole yeah, public? Yeah. Is that when he did the whole public enemy uh, working with them and all that? What say, bro? Is that when he worked with uh, public enemy and all them? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I'm saying. All, all that, all that was bomb squad you know, or something. So, like, yeah. all, all that was 
yeah, all that was, you know, all, cause all he did was Drake. You know what I'm saying? So he did, he, so for him to go to New York, which was new, was, was different. They worked with East Coast Cats, which was different. To do a whole entire album on his own, which was different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He just, he, it, it, he wasn't unsure. He just wasn't sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He did. He, 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 it wasn't solidified yet. So man, when I got a hold of that, when I got a hold of that motherfucker, West and homie, I was like, bro, you don't know what the fuck <laughs> you just did. Damn. Mm. All right, um, three more questions, my dude. Um, this this next question is kind of a two part question because this is one of my top favorite MCs of all time. Um, but uh, tell me what it was like working with Sugar Free, and on a second note of that, Mossberg as well. Rest in peace. Oh, man. Well, Free, Free, man, Free is just a talented motherfucker, man. Free is really one of those dudes, man, where Free is a different cat. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if you, you know, anybody. You know, I'm not gonna give a plus in in any anybody else, but just shit. But uh, you know, if anybody seen him lately, man? On, a lot on of TV. Music shit. Yeah, since he got a new video, you know, since he got a new album that just dropped, you know, that's him. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that's 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 him. He he's not playing. He's not portraying. He's not. That is that dude. And and, and it's funny to see him. Like in that pimp element and having that attitude towards pimping and doing all this shit, street shit. But then when it comes to music, he's just so on top of his shit. He's a talented motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So free always amazing. As far as Mossberg, the thing that the thing that people don't know is is just because it was it's DJ Quick, people think always think that it's D, that he was DJ Quick's artist, but he was never DJ Quick's artist. He was my artist. Oh really? With Shepard Lane, yeah. What? Shepard Lane, yeah. Tony, Tony Black Tone, yes. Shepard Lane came to me. Cause at first, the Keeper One Hundred, Keep Quick didn't even fuck with Monster. Quick didn't like Monster. I'm a Keeper One Hundred. Quick didn't like Monster. So, in order for them to keep it going, she turned. They turned to me, and 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 he was my artist. That's. I mean, that's why if you listen to his album, what's the first thing on the album? Yo, Sax Dog, let's break their backs, my nigga. What? I you know just, what man, that red yeah. and black CD. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. So that, I mean, so that, that goes to show you, it wasn't yo, okay. yo quick, dog. You know what I'm saying? It was yo, Sax Dog. So huh. that was my artist, homie. So to, so to see him grow the way he did was beautiful. But to see people think that he was quick's artist, that kind of aggravates the fuck out of me, but it is what it is. We yeah, quick. Mossberg was Mossberg was Mossberg was one of the best to do it out of LA. Homie, his, his life was cut short, but he, it, it, you know, the sky was the limit to that dude. It, 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 he was still, you know, yeah, stand on his own. He, he was a huge bit of a must. And and this is the reason why I do this show is for re is for things like that because I up until two minutes ago thought Mossberg was Quick's artist as well and I'm glad that you're able to say shit like that because if you don't say it on on platforms and people are gonna just go and not know the truth and that's that's exactly why I do this show I just want you to know that I really want to know your feelings because this shit broke my heart and me being around in '96 when Pac passed and experiencing this in in 2019 on April 1st. Um, it, I had I had the same feeling, um, and I cried like a baby. But talk to me about your thoughts on the whole Nipsey Hustle situation and how you felt when you heard it. Oh, man, that shit was a loss. It was a loss for it was a loss for everything, man. For the movement, for the streets, for the unity, for you know the the the, 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 the bringing together black you know black entrepreneurship. It was just, it, it, it was a loss that we lost, we lost it all when we lost that dude, man. And, um, what, what I loved about him was he, he was a, he, he, he was a young rider, man, and he knew everything. Like, it, it was nothing that he didn't get off into, that he didn't pursue, that he didn't know everything to talk about, like, all the facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I first met him, he knew, you see what I'm saying? Oh, like, I didn't wow. have to go off and shoot. Oh man, what's up? How you doing? I'm I'm big saxon. I did this. I put them stiff and I rap and I with the list. I didn't need to do none of that when I met Nip Nip New. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's and, and, but he's done that with everybody he's ever met. Like that's that's the same reason. Uh, because when when it was, I remember just seeing uh, who was, what that dude uh, 
my my mind is fucked up right now, man. Excuse me, but the cat uh. Give me a clue. Oh, p- oh, okay. Uh, uh, uh yeah. Uh, uh, volume ten. Volume ten. Yeah. Uh, I seen the video with volume ten, and he broke it down, crying like a baby, man. But he said the same thing. He was like, man, you know, when I met him, he knew me. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Like he knew of me. He knew everything about me. He knew my contribution to this rap shit. I didn't have to do all that. I was doing bad when I saw him, but he didn't see none of that shit. He just saw. The good and the shit that I, the, the contributions I make to hip hop, and that was lit, bro. That's why he got sent off the way he got sent off. He deserved, he got sent off like a king, homie, and he deserved that. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep his legacy alive, man. Damn, I'm getting chills just even talking we about got, it. We got to, like this came marathon, man. We got yeah, to, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to do now, like with me. You know, I'm uh, retired. You know what I'm saying? I'm retired from the rap game as far as. Being a rapper and shit, but you know, I'm still like my thing, my love now was uh, I do videos, I'm, I'm a videographer. Okay, so, you know, I do actually still a photography, I do it all, but but that's my main thing. So, yeah, that's my goal, man, to keep this shit going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to do nothing weird, I'm not into no weird shit like everything I'm doing is kind of street, kind of grimy, but it's from a cinematic point of view. So, it's some, I got some dope shit coming mm. before I, before I, um. Tell tell the audience, or you tell the audience where they can find you and if they want to follow you and all that. If I may, heart to heart, um, person to person, I really and, and I, I've told maybe four or five people that's been on my show um, this particular thing, and I think you should do it. But you need to start a podcast because you have a story, and if Joe Budden can get a million downloads a week, you could do it. Like real talk, it's going to take some time, but I've just listened to your story. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I know we could talk for hours on this so i'm just throwing it out there do a podcast do a video cast something if you need help i've been doing this for 10 years i would be gladly to give you some pointers but i think you need to put your story out there dog hey man you know what bro you, you probably going to be the one that actually gets me to do it because i've been hearing that for years now have bro. To. so yeah i think you just solidified it okay i'm glad i hope i planted that seed and like i said reach out if you need anything because you know, it would be my my own back to you for coming to my show and sharing your story and i hope we can do it again man oh man no problem i appreciate it yeah love it. i appreciate actually the uh, avenue to do it like i said because like you said if i don't tell my story who the fuck gonna do yep, it yep very true <laughs> homie very true um do you want to give your instagram facebook anything like that and um yeah, yeah, for my for my Facebook, it's uh, Daddy D, you know what I'm saying? Or, uh, and for my Instagram, it's Daddy D. And then uh, basically my Twitter is OG Daddy D. And uh, just follow me, man. I cl- I clown, I have fun and shit. You know, I don't I don't take life too seriously with the social media shit. So I have fun. I, I drop little jewels here and there. Keep it keep it fun and keep it simple. So if you you know you like this interview, you like my get out, man. Yeah, follow. Me. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. I'll make sure I um, connect with you when I um, release the video and, and you can promote it to your audience as well because they're going to love this interview, man. Thank you very much for your contribution. You gave me chills like three times. I'll talk to you soon, man. I'm going to make sure to stay close in touch with you. Oh, man. I appreciate it, bro. All right, much man. Love. Take care, homie. Have a good night. Right, Peace. Peace. Ah. Hip hop, man. Fuck. I love talking about hip hop, dude. Hell yeah, that shit was dope. Fuck, like those hip hop stories give me chills, dog. I first of all, I love West Coast hip hop. Like yeah, I grew up, absolutely. Yeah, the first the first tape I fell in love with pretty much it was two. It was Too Short and it was N.W.A. Okay. And that just solidified it with the West Coast with me. Like it was like, oh well, man, check this out. This is gonna trip you out because the first album I liked or fell in love with. I mean, I heard singles here and there. I was younger, but the first album I got that my, ho- my homie gave me that he told me you, you like this kind of music, you can have it. Was America's Most Wanted. Oh no shit! So when and I when I heard it, I was like, yeah. dude, this is dope. Because yeah. you know what I liked about it was I could understand it, I could relate to it. It was just even though I was a little. White-